Welcome to the show, folks. You're going to enjoy Carol and Donna. So here we go. We want to welcome you to This is Carol Robertson. And if you'll stay tuned for the next 30 minutes, Carol and Donna will encourage you to live your life for Jesus Christ. Welcome to the program today. We know you're going to enjoy this program. We're here with our friends, Miss Kitty and Mr. Dude. Carol, aren't we having a great time? So glad you're with us, folks. I love all of you in Christ. The next 30 minutes will be praising the Lord, teaching you the Bible, a program that lifts up Christ. So glad to have you along with us. Aren't you glad the Lord uses common people? I've been a common man ever since I came in this old world, and I'm glad of it. Here's a song that talks about it. It's called simply, Just a Common Man. I'm just a simple common man, an ordinary common man. I know the world don't really care, but I've got eternal life, cause I know Jesus Christ. That makes me a millionaire Wherever I go Whatever I do I'm just as common As a plain old shoe But in God's eternal plan He chose a common man When Jesus came to set us free He became a common man like me I'm just a Simple common man, an ordinary common man I know the world don't really care But I've got eternal life Cause I know Jesus Christ That makes me a millionaire I don't fit in with the modern day I like those good old-fashioned ways And you don't have to pretend When you've been born again You can be just what you are When Jesus comes to live in your heart I'm just a simple common man An ordinary common man I know the world don't really care eternal life cause I know Jesus Christ that makes me a millionaire I'm just a simple common man an ordinary common man I know the world don't really care but I've got eternal life cause I know Jesus Christ that makes me a millionaire yeah, that makes me that makes me a millionaire. Okay, thanks a lot. And I'll be back to pick that up later. See ya. Bye-bye. Hey, did you find anything? I did. Oh, it's beautiful. And I'm going to go back and pick it up later. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, folks, you know when Jesus taught in John 14 and John 15, he said he would not leave us comfortless, that he would send the blessed Holy Spirit. The Bible says he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Here's an old song you don't hear too much anymore. He abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason for my bliss Yes, the secret now is this, that the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Bye. 
abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Yes, the Comforter abides with me. He will abide with you if you live for Jesus.
Well, we sure are hoping you're enjoying this program, and I hope you enjoyed that last song. You know, over the years, the Lord's allowed us to make over 25 musical CDs, and many of them are on DVDs like we're filming here in this western town today. A lot of materials that are helping your Christian faith, folks. A lot of biblical materials. Listen as our friend Jack Parnell tells you about those materials. And hey, let's go get a cup of coffee. Yeah, how about it? Many of these great songs that you're hearing on today's program are on Carol's newest CD, Heart and Soul. Sing songs like song. Sing a Song. Sing a song. All day long. Suddenly there's a valley. Suddenly there's a valley. Begin. What wilt thou have me to do? What wilt thou have me to do while I am passing this way? What wilt thou have me to do? Jesus is asking today. Just a closer walk with thee. I'll be satisfied as long. Plus many more, including Donna and Carol together singing, He Abides, and Thank God I Am Free. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Call today and make heart and soul part of your musical library, along with all of the other CDs and ministry materials that are available. Call today or visit us on the web at www.carolroberson.com. Boy, I'm excited to tell you that the new book, Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel, is now available. It's been on my heart for many years. So many people have written, wanted to know how to study the Bible. How do you study the Jewish roots of the Christian faith? And the Lord has led me to write this new commentary on Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel. You need to get this in your library and get these truths established in your heart, folks. And we're going to begin our series today on Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel, excerpts from this new book. So I want to challenge you to think outside the box now. Some of this stuff you've never heard before, maybe. I want you to grow in your Christian faith and be everything the good Lord would have you to be. This book will help you now. It's the first volume of this new commentary. So let's get started in our first series teaching on Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel. The Old Testament scriptures ended on a sad note. There were unexplained ceremonies, unachieved purposes, unappeased longings, and unfulfilled prophecies. So between the Old and New Testaments are almost 400 long years of silence. No prophet thundered. No king from the house of David sat on the throne in Jerusalem. Israel was a stranger in their own land, except for about a hundred years of the Hashmonean dynasty, which was between 140 B.C. to 37 B.C. After the Babylonian captivity, the Israelites had learned their lesson about idolatry, and they returned back to the land of Israel under the permissive decrees of Cyrus and his successors. The temple worship had been reestablished, although uh, the temple was in the hands of the corrupt Sadducees who were mere puppets of Rome. Around 198 B.C., under the Syrian ruler Antiochus the Great, the land of Israel was divided into the five provinces that we read about in the Gospel accounts. Galilee, Samaria, Judea, Trachonitis, and Perea, also called the land beyond Jordan. Among all of this political and religious trouble, enters the world the person of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Matthew alludes to the Old Testament scriptures over 60 times. And when Jesus the Christ taught the scriptures, he taught himself from the Old Testament, what they would call the Tanakh. You can see this in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, and Luke chapter 24, verse 44. So this is why the gospel of Matthew is so important to our understanding the scriptures as a whole. 
<clears throat> the best commentary on the Bible, of course, is the Bible itself. So my desire is not to give you just another commentary on Matthew, but to help you better understand the text from the historical Hebrew perspective. In my research over the years, the precious Lord has allowed me to uncover many wonderful and sometimes unusual truths that I wanted to share with you. I have been favored to travel to Israel many, many times over the years, and this has driven me to study the Bible from the ancient Jewish resources, the historians, the early church fathers, as well as a deeper look inside the gospel accounts. The gospel according to Matthew is unique, giving us the very first account of Jesus when we open the pages of the New Testament. Matthew, his name in Hebrew is Matit Yahu. It means gift of Yahweh. He was one of the gospel writers and he actually walked with Christ himself. He was an eyewitness. He could have said, I was there when it all happened. Another reason I've chosen Matthew's gospel is because it is documented by many of the early church fathers that Matthew wrote his gospel in the Hebrew dialect first before it was ever translated into Greek. Here's a few examples. Now Matthew made an ordered arrangement of the oracles in the Hebrew language and each translated it as he was able. That was written by Papias, the bishop of Hierapolis, who lived from 60 A.D. to 130 A.D. Here's another one. Matthew also among the Hebrews published a written gospel in their own dialect when Peter and Paul were preaching in Rome and founded the church there. That was written by Irenaeus, the bishop of Lyons, between 130 A.D. and 200 A.D. Listen to this. Having learned by tradition concerning the four gospels, which are alone indisputable in the church of God under heaven, that there was written first that which is according to Matthew, who was once a publican, but was afterward an apostle of Jesus Christ, and it was issued to those who once were Jews, but had believed and was composed in Hebrew. That was written by Origen, a Christian theologian in Alexandria, Egypt, between 184 A.D. and 254 A.D. Here's another one for you. Matthew committed his gospel to writing in his native tongue. That was recorded by a very uh, dependable historian, Eusebius, the bishop of Caesarea, between 263 A.D. and 339 A.D. It is also recorded that St. Jerome, who lived between 347 and 420 A.D., he believed that the true way to study the gospels was from the Hebrew language, going against the thought of Augustine, who believed the Greek was inspired. Jerome had a copy of the Gospel of Matthew in Hebrew in 390 A.D. Eusebius also tells us that Pantaneus, a Christian theologian around 190 A.D., went to India on a mission journey and found that one of Jesus' own apostles, Bartholomew, better known as Nathaniel, had taken the Gospel of Matthew to India written in the Hebrew language. Epiphanius, who was the bishop of Salamis, Cyprus, in 310 to 403 A.D., was a careful student of the Scriptures and also spoke five languages, including Hebrew. He believed that Matthew's gospel was originally written in the Hebrew language. But the primary reason we believe that the gospel of Matthew was written in Hebrew originally is because of the styles of his writing. There are many Hebraic styles when you read the Gospel of Matthew, such as Ramez, which means a hint of the Messiah, Gematria, which means the numerical value of Hebrew letters, Hyperboles, giving extreme illustrations, Kavachamers, comparing the less with the greater. That's Hebrew, and that's all in the Gospel of Matthew. Paradoxes, seemingly contradictions, uh, word puns, words that sound similar with different meanings. String of pearls, stringing a part of a verse with another verse. Jesus did that. Parallel, saying the same thing twice, but in a little different wording. And idioms, Hebrew sayings, uh, where the meaning is not always so obvious. You've been listening to a small portion 
of my newest book, Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel. And if you're interested in getting this into your heart, I hope and pray that it will help you in your Christian faith, and I believe it will. It's a different approach to the Bible from the way Jesus would have looked at the Scriptures in His day. And when you read this book, it will tie you into the Old Testament. It's a need for those ministers who are wanting a deeper study in the Bible and lay people alike. Listen to my friend Jack Parnell as he tells you all about it. Carol's newest book, Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel, Volume 1, is now available. After years of Hebrew research, Carol has unlocked many untold secrets about the Gospel of Matthew. Did you know that Matthew was written in Hebrew before it was translated into Greek? Did you know that Matthew was probably the first Gospel written? Who was Matthew writing to and why? What is the Hebrew meaning behind the words of Jesus the Messiah? This book Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel, contains in-depth truths in a way that's rarely found today and in a way that's easy to understand. This book is for Christians who desire to know how to interpret the Scriptures from the original perspective. Matthew, the Hebrew Gospel, Volume 1. Order your copy today. Every spring, Carol and Donna lead a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And we'd like to encourage you to make plans right now to go on our next Holy Land pilgrimage. For 10 days, you'll walk in the very same places that Jesus walked as we uncover treasures from the life of Christ that have changed many people's lives. Carol will teach you the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, and you'll gain a deeper understanding of the life of Jesus and His ministry in Galilee. Our tours are limited to small groups, so call today for information and a free brochure. 
If you enjoy Carol's style of music and teaching on this program, you'll have the time of your life traveling with him and Donna to Israel. Register soon because accommodations are limited and tours fill up. Call 1-800-523-3228 or visit us on the web at carolroberson.com. Oh, I'm so excited to tell you about our upcoming Jesus is Real conference. And Jesus is going to become real to you folks. A free musical concert on Friday evening, Bible teaching all through the day on Saturday, and your registration fee does include a free breakfast mm -hmm. and a free lunch on Saturday. See, if you're interested, call the number on the screen and get registered today. There is limited seating available. When the storms of life are raging, Stand by me When the storms of life Are raging Stand by me When the world Is tossing me Like a ship Out on the sea Thou who rulest when and water Stand by me In the midst of faults and failures Stand by me Stand by me In the midst of faults and failures Stand by me, stand by me. When I do the best I can, and my friends misunderstand. Now. Didn't you just love this program this week? Miss Kitty and Dude and I did. And we're just a wishing that you have a great week. It's always a joy to come into your home. It's a dream come true for Donna and I to share Christ with the world. Couldn't do it without your help, folks. Thank you for your prayers. and Thank you for your support. Hope you're growing in your Christian faith. Hope Jesus is real and you're telling other people about what he's doing in your life. We love you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Carol Robertson Ministries is a member of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability.